this morning, and you just shrugged your shoulders listening to Lori's comments. What was your opinion of that? Yeah, if you can't come back, you can't make a statement like that and then come back and say, I'm not going to talk about this the rest of the year. Because now you've let the cat out of the gym, as I said earlier. Yeah, you said the other day. Said, yeah, but it's, the thing is, the owner doesn't need to put that added pressure on, I don't think. And, you know, he's the owner. He can do what he wants. Now is the Arizona Cardinals because if they know, they're not saying who their starting quarterback is, Kevin Cobb, or is it John Skelton? If you are a player on that team... In NBA history, Kobe now stands with Kareem. Carl, MJ, and Wilt, and in Lakers history, he's with Kareem. We just heard magic. Jerry West, so he's keeping really good company. 30,000 can also get you some really good frequent flyer mileage. Yes, you, you know. can. Uh, so does Michael Wilbon keep really good company, who, along with his buddy Tony Kornheiser, tackles the debate of who is the better scorer, Kobe Bryant or Michael Jordan? Well, that was highly entertaining. Yep. Yep, you are not alone if you questioned whether or not Peyton Manning would be able to return to form after his shoulder surgery. You are alone now if you aren't buying what he's selling in Denver. Behind Manning, the Broncos have at least 30 points in six of their seven games on this current winning streak. Has Peyton Manning been the most impressive player in the league this season? Our Audible's crew picks up the discussion. Oh. College football analyst Christian Fourier with us now, and we're going to get your pick on the Heisman, but we got to build up to that, right? Suspense. Yes. Keep you in suspense. All right. The Home Depot Awards coming our way later tonight. So we're going to run through these, get your picks. Let's start with the Maxwell Award for Most Outstanding Player. Okay, well, you said that. Two guys who are up for the Heisman on Saturday. Isn't it nice the way that it works It is. Out? You're, you're an expert. <laughs> so who takes it home Saturday night? I, well, I think we're going to see the first freshman ever in it's the most outstanding player who captures our imagination and our attention at the right time. Johnny Football did that. Congratulations. Well, they do say in life, timing is everything. Yes. Christian Fourier, great stuff. Thanks Thank for being you. Well, one of only five 30,000 points, life coming full circle. Plenty of drama surrounding Kobe's most recent accomplishment. But his now coach, who once the teenage Bryant looked up to, well, when he was in Italy, he found some humor in the milestone. Yeah, Dan Tony says this just means he's old getting 30,000 points. Ironic, considering Kobe's actually the youngest player to reach this milestone, but it did take him the most amount of games. We now take a look back at some of Kobe's greatest accomplishments. Center, when the Daytona 500 winner is your flag man. John Anderson, Lindsay Zarniak here. Jimmy Johnson is up there. up there. He's gonna be down with us in a minute to walk through his second win on the beach. First, though, <laughs> chin dimples and NFL paychecks. Dude, what happened? He meant Sorry, to I couldn't hold on to it. From the great American race to the greatest living American, Tom Brady signing a contract extension that will keep him with the Patriots until he's 40. The numbers are eye-poppingly. So now that we got Jimmy Johnson sitting here, we're going to take the opportunity to talk about his second Daytona 500 win from yeah. yesterday. So your 400th career start, your 61st. Your car. They take your car and they put it in the museum. They do. For a year. What is that all about? It's been there forever, as long as I've been in the sport. They Jimmy, so okay. he took to Twitter and asked fans out there if they had anything they could ask you, what would it be? It could be dangerous. It can be very dangerous, <laughs> but luckily, you know, we're, we're tender here. What was going through your head when you see Dale Jr. charging hard in your rear view on the last lap? Jazz, you're talking. No, no, no jazz. Well, which, no, but no jazz. All right. Now, if you're Mark Martin, you want 50 Cent blowing, you know. Exactly, that's right. What, that's <laughs> he was so stoked to meet 50 at the race was this weekend. Was he really? Oh, he was like a school kid. He went nuts over it. Yeah, because so. 50 yeah. Cent was down there in the in pit road. And all 125 pounds of Mark Martin loves him some rap. <laughs> but that is not Jimmy Johnson. <laughs> what was your favorite win of all time? For me, I... Racetrack. I'm Nicole Briscoe alongside Rusty Wallace, Ray Evernham, and Brad Doherty. I kid you not, Denny Hamlin just did the Dougie. Go on the <laughs> <laughs> this is the coolest place to be on this night. You wouldn't want to be anywhere else. And since the last time we are here, we have a lot of things going on, a lot of changes. Burton Smith, thanks to some vocal fans who decided they didn't really like the action they were seeing in the spring. Struggling, talking about RCR mightily throughout the season. And I, th I think Kevin Harvick said enough. So while they're struggling, Brad Keselowski has been on quite a roll, really, for the last year. He's riding a...
Memorial Day weekend stacked with NASCAR tradition, the Coca-Cola 600 in Charlotte, NASCAR's backyard. Rusty Wallace, recently elected to the Hall of Fame, is with us to break down the race. And they're just letting anybody into the hall now, aren't they? Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> kidding. We are so happy for you. Thank We're you. so happy to have you with us to help break down Appreciate this race. Appreciate that a lot. This was a very entertaining, dramatic race. Casey came, we see, getting uh, his first win there with Hendrick. He's really picked things up. He's got top tens in the last six races. But as you look at the success now that we're almost halfway through, 12 races in towards the chase for the championship, who do you think is really the driver to beat out there? Well, right now, I'm still thinking... Earnhardt Jr. seems like he is riding the ship. He got a sixth place finish here at Charlotte, but we know that he's been fairly consistent. Can you pull out your crystal ball and tell us when is he going to get his next win? How I, soon I, is it going to be? I'm going to pull my... What did before the race started uh -huh. because of the Hall of Fame stuff. And you could tell he was in. He was ready, man. He was he is up for the game. He has that mental focus. That yeah, he I thought he did. He shook hands with all the uh, the military down there. We're talking about him a lot, uh, and uh, we're uh, we're talking good about him right now because he's consistent. Rusty Wallace, we appreciate your time. Thanks for making the trip up here on Memorial Day. Get back for the barbecue and some <laughs> late time, it. if you Thank would. You. you can take some of us with you. <laughs> he has huh? what'd you say? The Bugatti boys. The Bugatti boys. You yeah, like that, right? I like that. Yes. <laughs> Teddy Bruschi, three Super Bowls to his name. He's also bold, a perfect game. That's my favorite. Fun fact about you, Teddy. Yes. We're going to find that video at some that. point. Yes. You should be. As we'll you go should. bowling sometime. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. I can buy your own shoes, though. <laughs> Thank you. Excuse I will. Me. Okay, perfect. <laughs> More on that later. Ben Roethlisberger is adjusting to a new offensive coordinator, Todd right. Haley, a new system. Really? He doesn't know them right now, all right? Todd Haley is installing the system, but the adjustment level has just begun. In the relationship, how important is that? I mean, do you, do you have to love each other? Do you have to go to lunch? No, I don't, I don't, you don't have to double date now, Lindsay. You don't well, have to double, double date. date. You don't have to be best friends, but uh, I think you do have to have a working... ...joins us this morning, and Jason, the Cowboys and Giants, they kick off the season in six days. Jimmy Johnson, who won a couple Super Bowls during his time in the 90s, he's a big Tony Romo fan, and here's what he had to say to ESPNDallas.com earlier. Jason Taylor with us this morning on SportsCenter, also on NFL Live at 4 Eastern here on ESPN. Thank you, Jason. Thank you. The holy grail of tailgating. That is how the Sporting News once described the Grove, the tailgating home of the Ole Miss faithful. Recently named number one in Tailgater Monthly's search for the best pregame atmosphere, Ole Miss does high style. Fine china, candelabras, a big departure from cornhole and the red plastic cups that you find at other venues. Chris Connolly took a trip to see who really knows how to do it right. Those are the guys I do know. That's exactly how they're built. They're built from within. It's not about the big money. Band-Aid fix. It's about the homegrown, right. Right? right? Barry Larkin. Hey, by the way, baseball tonight, the place to be for all things baseball. 10 p.m. Eastern here on ESPN. Thank you, Barry. All right. Is what you said correct? Because he's touring. He's got a new book out, and we're going to talk to you about that in a moment. But what goes through your mind when you watch that clip of yourself winning the championship? It's kind of crazy because I still get the butterflies. Sadly, does it take you back to that moment? It does. You know, I had trained for 10 years, and it consumed me from there on out. So you started in ninth grade, and I know that it was tough for you in the beginning. What was the biggest adversity that you faced when you were getting things going and trying to find success in that sport? Uh, but uh, you know, training through it and with the help of my, my family, my teammates. You've overcome everything. So what is your biggest obstacle now? Uh, I'm just living day by day right now. You know, I'm, I'm enjoying the drive. I think so. Liam Neeson is somewhere on our campus today. You could probably ask him if you run into him. Maybe. <laughs> All right, Anthony Robles, <laughs> thank congratulations. You so much. Best of luck. And thank you for joining us this morning on Sports Center. Kevin. We all want Denzel. <laughs> It may be the Tuesday of an off week, but this day has been anything but off. Hey there, and welcome to NASCAR Now. I'm Nicole Briscoe. Today... Hello, hello, and happy Wednesday. Welcome to NASCAR Now. I'm Nicole Briscoe. Ahead in this next half hour... Hello, hello. Welcome to NASCAR Now. I'm Nicole Briscoe. Ahead in the next 30 minutes, we look ahead to the Brickyard with the help of a former winner, Bobby. And we welcome in two legends in their own right from our Sunday night baseball crew, Oral Hershiser and Terry Francona. And gentlemen, I want to start with Robinson Cano. He has been on fire lately. He's got an RBI in eight straight games. He's three shy of tying that franchise record. Terry, where do you have him 
in your early MVP race. Well, Strasburg takes the mound tomorrow night against the Rockies. Davey Johnson is about to start a firestorm. He says he could make Strasburg the team's fifth starter after the All-Star break to give him more rest and watch his inning count heading into the fall. Is this the right strategy? Because we know that the Nationals have said that they will pull the plug if they need to. Just the video game with you. a lot of patterns going on here. Back to RG3. There's going to be a come to Jesus meeting, right? Between Shanahan talking to RG3, figuring out how they're going to use him in the offense. What should that plan be at the end of the day to make everybody happy? Well, I think Coach Shanahan is going to remind him that he can help him in this in your head. And that's the conversation that Mike's going to have with him. How effective do you think he can be if he limits that mobility? Very effective. This guy's a tremendous athlete. He says he will be back in just a bit with more. Welcome in. It is Friday. It is a brand new live sports center. He is Bram Weinstein. I'm Jay McCarthy. We are satisfying your college football fix. Robert Smith, Brent Musburger, they are both with us live this morning. We're looking at him live. Plus, Hall of Famer Eric Dickerson joins us live to get his take on Adrian Peterson's chances of breaking his single season rushing record. Sports Center starts. NFL 25, and I have to say, it's in stores now, and you have to watch closely because we're going to put a secret hashtag on the screen while we're here talking to Eric. When you see it, you need to tweet it at our show, and you have a chance to win a copy. All right, let's talk about that single-season <laughs> rushing record, because nearly three decades later, it is still intact. What's it mean to you, Eric? Adrian Peterson came very close to it last season, nine yards shy of breaking it. So what did you make of his performance throughout the season? Well, I thought it was a great performance. I mean, mainly because of the injury that he had. Coming on, and the record is still Standing, yours. Right. We'll, we'll continue to watch it, no doubt about that. Uh, it was a landmark day in the NFL yesterday, a settlement reached between the players and the league on concussion-related lawsuit. Um, you were among the 15 players that filed that lawsuit. Why did you decide to go forward and do that? Um, I thought it was good. I mean, I didn't think it was nothing phenomenal or great, really. And, it's, and like I say, it's not even about people think it's all... Oh. It is 10 a.m. on your Friday morning, and a new hour of Sports Center begins right now. He's Bram Weinstein. I'm Jade McCarthy. A team outside of the SEC has not won the national title since 2005. So is this finally the year it happens again? We're going to ask Robert Smith to answer that question live. Plus, Herb Edwards is also live to answer NFL burning questions, including which second-year quarterback will have the best sophomore season, and I've been told his answer will be a surprise. Sports Center continues. <laughs> Time to soak up what New England has to offer, unless, unless you are a diehard Boston sports fan because the angst is rising. And Legs, this has been in the making for days. So now Doc Rivers goes to the Clippers. He's got a shiny new team. But where does that leave the Celtics? Shiny new team. That's a great way to put it. That's Thank you. Exactly is the guy that is usually dangled as trade bait, right? So the irony of him being the one left standing. But can you see Kevin Garnett when we show you this information? He and Paul Pierce, they are in rebuilding mode. Who do you think would be the best coach for the job? They end up going somewhere else. It's his team. You've got a whole different animal in your hands and that how you deal with him and his temperament. They could go the Jason Kidd route and try to convince Garnett to come on his head. That coach. would be interesting. How about that? Player Tim Wegler. Yes, yes. On the new look Boston Celtics. There's more in the Bleacher Report. What a night for it a big sounds game. Sounds good. Oh, it was. But don't call him Wiley. Okay, someone's got a serious <laughs> beef with that. Wade's wife. You guys know actress Gabrielle Union. Well, she tweeted that this is not vintage Wade. This is what he does, she said. What he did was end the Red Hot Sixers' unbeaten streak at 17 games. And 